when we look at the Ohio State defense, is this a fair comparison against Michigan? Because I put the stats together with what I watched, which is 90% of both team snaps that have been meaningful at least. And especially against the six common opponents, it's, it's very comparable. Actually, it's, it's within one one hundredth of a yard per play defensively. But it seems like Ohio, like Michigan has been consistent in stopping teams, teams and getting, and getting off, the, off field, the field, where Ohio State has been more like we get gashed, but, but the five-star shows up at the right time to make an outstanding play and turn the ball over or create a negative play that, that gets us out of, out of trouble. Well, just take last week, for instance, Ohio State gave up five pass plays of over 25 yards, including a 49-yarder. Uh, Tylea Tagovailoa, uh, Ohio State had five sacks in the game, but a little bit of that's misleading. Two of those came in the final minute when they were backed up against their own goal line and uh, trying to, you know, furiously uh, go on a 90-yard touchdown drive, you know, to try and steal the game at the end. And Zach Harrison had the two sacks, and one of them – for a uh, forced fumble, another one of the sacks was um, safety Josh Proctor tackled the quarterback a yard behind the line of scrimmage before he was about to pick up uh, some yards on a scramble. So, uh, you know, it wasn't like they got consistently great, great pressure throughout the game. And Tagovailoa, quite honestly, picked them apart last week. The good news is J.J. McCarthy is not Tylea Tagovailoa, nowhere near as accomplished. I popped in the Nebraska Michigan game here earlier today and the conditions were pretty bad for that game. It was kind of snowing and blowing, but uh, in the second half, uh, Mark Jones and the guys from ABC had to run a reel of all the really, really bad throws that JJ McCarthy had made in the game. I mean, that's how bad it was. So this is not a guy who's going to take advantage of a bad, I don't even say bad, just, uh, an up and down Ohio State secondary. They've had guys in and out of the lineup, you know, with a revolving door at cornerback. Denzel Burke and Cameron uh, Brown now seem to be back fully healthy and ready to go, but are they in a rhythm? I mean, are they at week four rhythm or are they at week 13 rhythm? We don't know. And uh, they're going to have to play like week 13 because Ronnie Bell's a really good wide receiver and they've got a couple other guys as well. But uh, to me, I think the critical part of this game for the Ohio State defense is Zach Harrison, JT Tui Moloow, and uh, Jack Sawyer getting that kind of pressure up front. And, uh, get, you know, they could use Michael Hall. He's kind of disappeared since the first four or five games. Use him squirting through those gaps and coming up the middle and collapsing the pocket. That would mean the world in this game to get Michigan behind and down a distance to where it has to be J.J. McCarthy. I mean, Michigan's going to r run the ball on first down probably 60% of the time with Blake Corum trying to set up second and five, second and four. And uh, then that way they could do whatever they want, you know, from there on second, third down. So uh, to me, uh, Tony, I mean, you may have a different view of it, but I, I was a little bit troubled by what I saw last week. But Ohio State remains solid as a rock against the run. Nobody has really run the ball all that effectively. Penn State got a few yards uh, here and there, but they really didn't amount to game changing yards. So uh, Ohio State, to me, is much improved against the run than they were last year going into this game. Yeah, and, and what Michigan does well offensively is what Ohio State does well defensively. And what Maryland what does well offensively is what Ohio State doesn't do well defensively. And you saw the results of that. And so the, it's going to take Michigan throwing the ball and completing passes, doing something that they haven't done much of the season, and doing it more than they have in any other game. So you're asking them to play their very best against their best opponent in the biggest atmosphere and the biggest game of the season. It's a lot to ask. Doesn't mean it won't happen. I'm sh we've all seen this game enough to know that stuff happens. And I've been saying it all week. I expect Michigan to hit a couple of deep shots because stuff happens. And so you, you, you as Jim Knowles says, you bake those in and then how do you overcome everything else? And I think, um, I've also been saying the last couple of days, J.J. McCarthy may need to be Troy Smith 2004 in this game. He's running around, making plays. He throws better. He throws well on the run. Um, and get him out, pick up yards on third down with his feet, frustrate the heck out of the Ohio State defense, just keep those chains moving and keep them on the field. And 
and is he capable of that? Was Troy Smith capable of that before he did it? No, but he did it. And JJ McCarthy has had some ups and downs, not playing really any better than Cade McNamara was last year. And they decided they wanted somebody better and they've gotten somebody with more potential, but they haven't gotten anybody better. And JJ McCarthy has to show that he's better this week. And especially because I don't expect Blake Corum to play at 100%. They may trot him out there because they, that's, that's what they do. They trot him out there. I don't think he was entirely healthy against Illinois and he still carried the ball 17 times in the first half before leaving due to the injury. But I think JJ McCarthy needs to be a playmaker. Naturally, he is, naturally he is a playmaker. Jim Harbaugh has to free him, let him go, but also um, don't make any mistakes, kid. 